Kid, seriously. Luke, I don't know if you heard, but there's a new movie that came out this week. We're going to do the White Crow review. According to the website, the White Crow is a life-changing visit to Paris for one Russian ballet dancer, Rudolf Nureyev, and he, he seeks asylum. Did you see that movie? Uh, I saw a movie this weekend, nothing about a White Crow. Oh, really? Should we review that one instead, then? I guess. Okay. Um, so Avengers Endgame came out. We both saw it. What are your thoughts on that? So when I first came out of the theater, I came out not disliking it, but kind of like not not loving it. And I think part of that has to do with how different it was from Infinity War. Infinity War starts out with action from minute one, and it never really lets up. And you're kind of flying through, and you get these big moments. And Endgame is different. There isn't an action scene until probably in, what, just about an hour, maybe slightly under an hour into the movie, maybe slightly over an hour into the movie. And I think if I, I had a second viewing, I would appreciate what they do in the first hour a little bit more than I did the first time I saw it. But I came out of it thinking it's it, it takes a while to ramp up, and all I wanted it to do was ramp up. But those character moments in the first hour are important. Um, after that, I thought it was awesome it was the exact right balance of throwbacks to previous movies cameos i never expected to doing new things with the characters to doing new action with the characters to wrapping up almost every character's storyline the way i would want it to wrap out i think this is a movie i'm only going to love the more times i see it um, didn't, didn't come out totally in love with it, but I feel like every day I think about it, I love it a little bit more. And I think the next time I see it, I'm going to love it completely. Where were you at? Uh, I, I love the movie and loved it coming out for, for reasons we'll get into in a little bit here. I, for me, it did the impossible. You know, the movie starts off with the lyrics to Dear Mr. Fantasy. And it was, it was so funny because it reminded me as it was going down of Joss Whedon when he did justice league and he put the, at least I tried, or I tried um, homeless person with the sign, but it was basically like the Russo saying like, this is our attempt to make you happy. This is our, our try to make it all work. And it, it really does. Uh, they, you know, it reminded me also of a, of a gymnast who does this or, or an ice skater who does this absolutely wonderful routine. But, and that's what these 22 movies have been. But you got to stick the damn landing. Star Wars has never been able to stick the landing. A lot of people hate Return of the Jedi. A lot of people hate the prequels. A lot of people are worried about this upcoming film. All these film franchises, the big thing, you know, we're, we're living through it, the X-Men and what that's going to be. Like, no one can stick the landing. And that was the impossible task in front of these, these two guys, and they did it. Um, everything, like you said, wrapped up in a way that I felt was satisfying. And I... And it's all done in what I think is a very good movie. I liked the callbacks. It makes me like every single Marvel movie more. Like, I had never been somebody who hated Thor 2, like a lot of people do. But now I'm really interested to go back and watch, you know, Dark World and and get into it a little bit. Um, I'm interested in going back and watching those Iron Man movies that maybe I didn't care for as much at the beginning. But every single Marvel movie now matters more. And it's now better i'm gonna watch the first avenger which is my personal sort of one that i go back to it's my comfort movie i'm gonna watch that so differently now and um i just i just think it's just it's just really added something it's like a nice dessert to this entire thing the callbacks for me um were great i like the pace a lot of people didn't like that pace but for me like i really needed i really needed the you know, it felt like a two-hour funeral because I was fully anticipating all of the Avengers to die. And spoiler alert, by the way, this is a spoiler movie. I'm sure you'll have a spoiler tag on it. But um, I I talked to Lady Madrid and I said, well, this is like going to a funeral. I wasn't excited for the movie at all. So I really needed to relive, relive all those moments as I was preparing myself for their upcoming deaths. 
and I thought the performances were really good. Um, they really mattered. And so those are the, the four main things that I really enjoyed about the movie. So is there anything you didn't like about the movie? Any yeah, I've got two, two small little quibbles. Um, the first one, and Lady Madrid and I talked about this, is we thought the, the you know, the, the girl power moment was a little heavy handed. Like it was a little over the top and felt like it maybe needed to be a little bit more subdued. Maybe I'm just from the 1990s where anything like that comes off as cheesy and I want, you know, I want everything to be subtle. But that that was kind of like, I don't know, it just seemed like they were trying so hard to show like, well, Wonder Woman was this great DC thing. And DC gets all this pub for, for doing all this stuff for ladies. So every movie since then, we got to have our girl power moment. It seemed kind of like forced. I think if you had... That's an interesting topic I think you bring up because you guys are both really big fans of Captain Marvel. And one of the things, like, I, I like the fact that, that Captain Marvel is a, a, you know, a feminist movie, I think you would say. But the, the one thing I thought about during Captain Marvel is that, like, they were so on the nose and in your face with the feminist themes. Part of what soured me a little bit is I go, this is movie 21. Like, it took you 21 movies to put a woman forward, and now you're trying to jam down their throat like women women matter, women are a big deal, women are, you know, marginalized, blah, 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 and we're taking a stand. And it's like, it took you 21 fucking movies to get there. And it took, you know, like, you know, it took DC3 movies. Now, granted, Wonder Woman is a much more popular pop culture character than Captain Marvel is, so it makes sense that they would go there first. But that was something that turned me off a little bit about Captain Marvel, even though I agree with what they were saying. I was like, you're a little too on the nose. And while I do feel that that moment was a little on the nose, what I also thought about was like, and, and this is what I think about Captain Marvel, and this is what I think about Wonder Woman, is like, I don't really care at the end what 30, 40, 50 year old people think about that moment being on the nose. I care about what seven-year-old girls think about that moment. I care about what seven-year-old girls think of Wonder Woman. I care about what seven-year-old girls think of Captain Marvel. And if that moment works for them and it says, fuck yeah, I can be a superhero too, it doesn't have to only be about men being superhero, then I'm all for it. Yeah, and I can I can see that, but at the same time, I think it was much more awesome Captain Marvel shooting straight through, like, her scenes in the last bit of that movie were absolutely awesome. And I think that is, if I was a seven-year-old girl, what I hope my eight-year-old girl would take from it is that, not necessarily, you know, like, all right, ladies, let's all get together and show how tough we are. Like, I, I think there's just a more, much more nuanced way to... Yeah, it's, it's just, to me, it's not a very pretty movie. I think the the Marvel came a long, long way, starting where they, you know, starting off, they were just very safe whether you're talking about not having a female lead or not having you know taking chances with stakes and things like that well one of the ways that they've been very safe in the beginning was the the, the look and the tone of visually of their movies and then with movies like guardians of the galaxy and then it really got wild with ragnarok it seemed like they were paying more more attention to the visuals of their movies and you know, Infinity War was was all right, but but it really took a step back. I felt like like the movie was kind of dark and dingy, and it just wasn't a spectacle. Like even the moments at the end, you know, when you've got Captain America sitting on the bench, like I, I feel like they could have done more with that. And maybe that's just what you get with the Russos. I mean, I'm trying to think of a great visual shot. Um, that sticks out in my mind, even way back to the Winter Soldier, and there really wasn't one. And I guess you know if. Every superhero has a weakness, and maybe that's their weakness. Well, and uh, so, so my two complaints that I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up right now is one is that while I like the direction they took Thor in this movie, I wish they hadn't played it for laughs so much because I think there's really something to be said about how he feels like such a failure, and he has become an alcoholic, and he has fallen out of himself. And I think there was a lot to be said for that storyline, and I wish it hadn't been played for laughs quite so much, because I think that moment with Rene Russo, where she talked to him and says, you aren't the son I remember, you know, you've been through a lot, and she kind of she peps him up or whatever, I think that would have had a lot more impact if we had taken his journey 
a little bit more seriously, where it felt like in the first half of the movie it was only played for levity, which I think is a little bit of a disappointment. My other complaint, and this is a total minor complaint, uh, and it has to do with time travel, is what the fuck happened with Spider-Man and all his reality? Like, did his entire high school get snapped? And they're all the same age, and now they're all back at the same high school, and nobody mentions the fact that they all need to re-go to school? Or are, like, half of them from, you know, you know, because, like, it's five years later, so Spider-Man should be in fucking college, or whatever, but he's going back to high school, and his buddy's still there. I That that part of it, maybe it'll give us an explanation in Far From Home, but I was like, what the fuck? Like, you, you made a big point to add, age up Cassie Lang, and you had a big point to not change Spider-Man's world at all. So those, those are my two complaints, but overall, this movie rocks. Cassie Lang was not... She didn't disappear. I think, I think, if, I think the movie kind of speaks for itself. Cassie Lang didn't disappear, and Peter Parker did. Well, no, but in, did Peter Parker's whole high school, right? Yeah. Because all of his well, high school well, kids well, are well, going to be in Far From Home. No, I understand your point. I'm trying to explain it to you here, Luke. Okay? Uh, I, ha- I think it's pretty clear half of his high school would have disappeared. And so they still need to be educated. He's still, what, a 15-year-old boy? And so he comes back, just like everybody else who comes back, five years later. So he has an age and everybody else has. Well, it, and it, it has to be dealt with in, in Far From Home, so we'll see what they do there or whatever. But, like, the I, I just feel like in Far From Home what we're going to get is they're going to act like that movie never happened. Oh, yeah. Everyone's going to be exactly the same. The entire high school is going to be exactly the same. It isn't going to be a bunch of, you know, Flash Thompson isn't suddenly going to be, you know, 21 or whatever and not in high school. And uh, there's going to be a bunch of 16-year-olds in high school with Spider-Man that are like, hey, we're five years younger than you. What the fuck happened? Or whatever. They're just going to ignore that happened. Again, I don't really care as long as they make good movies. But it was just one of those things where I went, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. You don't know. You don't know how everything's going to play out after Infinity War. When everyone snaps and half the world disappears. I mean, there's this movie had to deal with the repercussions of that, just like I'm sure the the rest of the movies will as well. Well, it's been awesome talking about this with you. So where can the uh, where can the kids find you? They can find me at Luke underscore Nitzel N E I T Z E L. Right on. I'm at Madrid. Oh, I'm at Maya Madrid. Together we're at Kids Seriously, and uh, let's hit the showers.